The next topic for discussion is acquiring knowledge for second language use. And under this, we will first discuss the academic competence. Acquiring knowledge for language which is second and its use, we really need to understand the kind of competencies required by learner. First language competency is different from second language competency, especially with regard to its use as well as the communication purposes. We see that the first language competence is more broader. It covers a, uh, in terms of its use and communication broader domain where lots of people are involved, lots of social contexts are involved and first learner is at ease in terms of getting engaged in the process of communication. However, second language often serves a much more limited range of needs than their first language and it all depends on the situation that they are in, the kind of linguistic rules that are required to meet the specific requirement of a specific situation. Therefore, the range is limited as compared to the range of first language. Therefore, there are two fundamental types of communication. Competence, communicative competence for the purpose of learning second language. Number one is academic competence and the second one is interpersonal competence. We will first discuss academic competence. Academic competence refers to the knowledge needed by learners who want to use second language primarily to learn some subjects, to use it scholarly for the purpose of developing or working on certain research or as a medium of communication in the professional as well as some occupational settings. For this purpose, the emphasis is on developing the vocabulary. That is the first area which is the focus of the academic competence in, with regard to second language learning. And the second is the proficiency of writing or developing proficiency in the writing skills is required to develop the academic competence. Dipanna and Iliad developed model of academic competence. It consists of study skills, interpersonal skills, academic skills, motivation and engagement. Now, Dipanna and Iliad defined academic Competence as multidimensional construct, a construct which has many levels, many dimensions and consists of skills, attitudes and behavior of learners that contribute to the success in the classroom. So, it, only, it does not only cover the academic skills that what needs to be covered in the classroom but the other skills which are the contributing factor in the development of those academic skills and they are attitudes, behavior as well as specific skills which as a whole come up with the understanding of how academic skills need to be developed. They believe that academic skills are the basic and complex skills that are primary focus of academic instruction in elementary and secondary school. In contrast, academic enablers, so they have the academic skills which are basically based on the academic instructions. So academic skill is one thing and second is the academic enabler. They are the attitudes and behavior that allow a learner to participate in the ultimately benefit from academic instructions in the classroom. So the academic skills are supported by the academic enablers, which are the attitudes and behavior, and they take forward the process and allow learner to participate in and get benefited from the academic instructions. So 
in the light of model of academic competence we have one academic skills and then the academic enabler so let's identify what are the academic skills and what are the academic enablers and academic skills as we can see is the reading mathematics and critical thinking skills and the enablers are the study skills interpersonal skills motivation and engagement so you can see that your academic skills in order to form academic competence are surrounded by the academic enablers now they have also developed aces aces which is academic competence evaluation scale and they feel that for for the development of academic competence it is important to determine the kind of proficiency required by the learner maybe in the reading mathematics or critical thinking and then corresponding the factor the enabler needs to be identified as well so according to their academic competence evaluation scale this is the aces scale they feel that motivation appears to be the first academic enabler that should be considered as a very vital in terms of contributing to the academic skills then the other vary depending on the grade of the student experiencing difficulty they feel that for children in the primary grades engagement is more effective and followed by study skills and then the final enabler for consideration can be your social skills or interpersonal skills this takes us to the understanding of academic self efficacy this refers to individual's conviction individual's belief in himself or herself that he or she can successfully perform any given academic task at the designated level and the attainment of the task is done successfully so it's the learner's belief that if the task is given to her or him that is the academic he or she has the ability to perform or accomplish that task successfully the other definition says that academic self efficacy refers to students perceptions of their competence to do their class work so it has to do with the academia it has to do with their learning process their academic learning process and again according to this second definition it is this learners perception their own opinion about themselves that they can perform any class work successfully two general categories of academic expertancy beliefs have been postulated they have been formed one is academic outcome expectation and the second is academic efficacy expectation academic outcome expectations are students belief that specific behaviors will lead to certain outcome that is for example if i do homework my grades will improve so this is the outcome expectation that if i do homework my grades will improve the second is academic efficacy expectations which are a students belief in their ability to perform the necessary behavior to produce a certain outcome for example i have enough motivation to study hard for this test now academic efficacy expectations are basically the ability to perform the necessary behavior to produce a certain outcome one's conviction of having ability to perform a certain behavior which will lead to a certain outcome now understanding the difference between these two forms expectancy belief is important as individuals can believe that a certain behavior will produce a certain outcome which is outcome expectations but may not believe they can perform that behavior so that is the efficacy expectation so having the knowledge about certain procedure or certain behavior leading to the outcome expectations but 
this possibility that they are not clear or they do not believe that they have this ability to perform that behavior. That is efficacy expectation. To conclude, the academic competence is the multidimensional construct based on academic skills and academic enablers. And academic self-efficacy is the learner's belief to accomplish the academic task successfully.